Hey guys, Alex here from Homeschool of Bel Air. Today's video is gonna be a look into what my boys are working on. But today I am gonna be doing a uh, somewhat pretty requested video. A lot of people wanna know what the boys are still working on, what we're doing as far as homeschool, um, what I've taken out, what we're still using. So I'm just gonna go workbox by workbox, pulling stuff out and showing you guys what each individual um, boy is working on. Um, so let me go ahead and set you guys up. Okay, so the first thing is writing. As far as writing, both boys are still on Handwriting Without Tears. And he's also working out of his monthly cursive pages. This is something that I purchased through um, Teacher paid teachers. Um, the lady or the shop's name is Sunny Days, shopsunnydays.com. You could also find them there. I'll try to link her teacher paid teachers on the description box. But this one is just a cursive copy work packet for every single month. And this is currently what we're working out of. I also like it because it has little coloring pages in the bottom. Your child can choose to color them if they want. So I know I've noticed that with Vincent, sometimes he colors them, sometimes he doesn't, which is no big deal. Um, so this is going to be something that we continue on through the school year. As far as Adrian goes, I might just try to find like a little journal like this that he can just do copy work. Um, I actually found some on Teacher Paid Teachers that I might purchase, but I'm just waiting for another sale before I purchase it. So that's going to be something that I probably get for him later on this school year. Um, the other thing that we work on is we work on the Draw and Write journals. This is um, something that we do only on Fridays. And um, as of right now, this is going great. The boys are loving it, but the boys are definitely into it. They love it. Um, they uh, like the copy work. Um, they do, my younger son, my, my six-year-old does fight me a little bit on the writing, more so than my older son. Um, but he still gets through it. On some occasions, I do have to write it in with the yellow marker and then he just traces over it, which is no big deal. Um, that is usually what we do. But uh, I forgot the horse and the turkey are <laughs> messed up. There we go. So there's the turkey and then the horse and then the barn. So right now we're at the barn. Um, and then for this Friday, we'll be doing the duck. Um, one of the things that I do want to mention is I do, I do have these journals uh, f up for free on my teacher paid teachers. And I'm currently working on draw and write um, book number two. So you guys should be able to see those up on my teacher paid teachers for free as well soon. Um, so that is what we do as far as writing. Let me go ahead and uh, get the majority of our work, which is language arts. Let me go ahead and pull that aside. So before I jump into our actual language arts curriculum, I do want to mention that this is something else that my six-year-old has been working on, or my first grader. This is the McGraw-Hill phonics book. This is something that I found at a Goodwill. So what he does with this phonics book is he does one page a day, so it would be front and back on every day. Um, and it's just an extra phonics book that just pretty much reinforces everything that he's already learned. And I'm just making sure that he just kind of gets uh, re-familiarizing himself with the phonics sounds. Um, he still has trouble with the few. He still flips the B and the D. Um, he still has trouble with the H and the N. So this is just kind of going to help him out a little bit with the uh, beginning sounds, middle sounds. We also deal with ending sounds. So I'm really enjoying this book. And Adrian tends to work on this while Vincent is still working on this. Since this takes a little bit longer and there's just a little bit more time that he sits doing his actual writing, um, we get to squeeze this in with Adrian. And he does it pretty fast anyway. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys that. So this is something new that we started doing. And like I said, it's just a page a day. And so now for our language arts. So as far as language arts goes, we're using the Harcourt Trophies. We've been using this for a while. We love it. Um, the blue books are the first grade level and the red books are the... Um, second grade level. Now my son is in third grade, but he does read at more of a second grade level. So instead of moving him up to third grade level books, I decided to just keep him here. Um, and he's doing perfectly fine with this. He struggles a little bit still, but we're doing so much better than we were from the beginning of the school year. Um, so the way that we do this, and I'm not going to go super in depth with the books and showing you everything that's in here because I've done that before. Um, I do have a complete review on the first grade level of the hardcore trophies and I'll try to link that in the description box and um, this year what we're doing differently is that we're using this for our for everything we're using this for our reading we're using it for our phonics we're using it for our spelling and we stopped using it for our grammar but I will show you guys later what we're doing for grammar um, 
so let me go ahead and um, start just by showing you guys their, some of their completed work so you guys get an idea as to how we're doing it. Okay, so this side here is Vincent. This is my uh, second, third grader. Um, these are his spelling tests. The spelling test we do every Thursday. Um, what I like about this curriculum is that for the second grade level, they give you vocabulary words. And they also give you your spelling words that fall under like a phonetic sound that you're going to be working with for that whole entire week. We read our story Monday through Thursday and then we have our spelling words that we have to work with throughout that whole week. We have our activities that we do. So all of our um, worksheets are in here and um, our spelling um, and phonic um, word sorts are in here. Sorry, I was going to blank. Um, so all that kind of good stuff is in here. They also have a little uh, spelling or a little vocabulary and comprehension test that they do every Thursday as well. And um, then we go on to the next story and we kind of do it the same way pretty much every single week. Um, these cover pages here is what I call them. These pages are, are some that I created myself for the hardcore trophies. Um, and I've created them for the first grade level and the second grade level. I've done them a little bit differently for the boys. So if you guys can see here for the first grade level, I just have an area for the title of the story, his words to remember, which are just like sight words, and then the area for their cross-curricular activity, where Vincent has an area for the author's name, the genre of the story, and then area for his vocabulary words, and then the cross-curricular activity. So they're pretty much the same. Um, the lines are just smaller. Me and Vincent, we talk a little bit more about genres of stories and uh, what all that means. Um, so when it comes to the stories, we do a lot of uh, the cross-curricular activities. We can do a little bit of science, a little bit of social studies, depending on the story that we're reading. Um, and all these activities are just activities that I get from um, either the practice book that comes with this curriculum or the teacher guide gives us a lot of great ideas for different things like this to do with the story, to go along with the story. Um, so this is all Vincent right now. We're on lesson number, we're going to be starting lesson number nine on Monday. So here I have all the way up to lesson number eight. Um, and that is how we're doing our work. Let me show you a little bit of Adrian's. It's pretty much the same. He has his little spelling test that we do every Thursday. Um, all his little uh, cover pages are in the beginning of all of our work. We have all of our um, uh, worksheets and activities that we do throughout the week based on the story that we read. So all that kind of good stuff is in here. Um, it's all pretty, like I said, it's all the same. It's the same curriculum. As the grades go up higher, the it does change a little bit, but not by much. Um, so that is what we do as far as language arts when it comes to their activities that go with the books. Um, the other thing that we do with this is the boys get their um, vocabulary words. Adrian gets sight words. So with him, all he has to do is write his sight words. Um, he finds just in the area alphabetically where it needs to go and he writes it in. Where Vincent actually has to write down the word and the definition. So his pages are a little bit different. And these dictionaries I do have available um, on my teacher paid teachers. And when you buy the PDF, you actually get both versions of it. Okay, now as far as spelling goes, so the Hardcore Trophies curriculum gives, um, the first grade level gives Adrian 10 spelling words to focus on for the week, and Vincent gets 15 words. Um, so the way that we do it is we, I created for them the little spelling word booklet, uh, spelling words booklet, sorry, and um, pretty much all the spelling words that they're going to be focused on, focusing on for the week are in here. Um, so right now we're on nine, or... Um, Lesson nine. So these are Vincent's spelling words and he gets 10 usually phonetic um, words that we're working on phonetically for that week. He gets 10 of them. He usually gets about two review words from the week before and then he gets three sight words. So that is how Vincent's um, spelling words work. And the way that we do it is we pretty much just have their little spelling uh, practice notebook. This, all it really is, is they write their words every day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. As far as Vincent goes, I have him break up the words by syllables on Tuesdays. And we talk about the different syllables. We clap them out. And um, it just kind of helps him with the spelling. And then on Wednesday, he writes it with the pen. And then on Thursday, he writes it with marker. And basically, Adrian does it exactly the same way. He has his little spelling word booklet. Um, these would be his spelling words for this week. 
And with him, his is a little bit different. Um, he gets a few phonetic uh, type of uh, spelling words and then he gets sight words. With Adrian is just a little bit different. Um, some of them, sometimes he gets a lot more sight words than other weeks. So it just depends. It depends on what we're working on for that week. Um, but for week number nine, um, all these words are just going to be words that we're working with phonetically and then he gets uh, a few sight words. So, um, and he does the same thing. He has his own little spelling practice notebook. He only gets 10 words, so he gets to write them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. With him, there's no clapping out of syllables because most of his words are just single syllable words. Um, but he does it the same way, color pencil, rainbow color pencil, pen, and then marker. Um, and then they get their, they each have their word building or new words notebook. All this is, is because for spelling, we're doing word building this year. Um, and it's more of the style of, uh, building words or making words, or I guess how, um, what is it all about spelling would work where you're actually using the magnetic tiles to build your spelling words. It's kind of the same idea, um, but I'm using touch phonics letters and I'm using the touch phonics, um, soundboard. So it's basically the same idea though, or each boy gets, um, a certain amount of letters like for instance Vincent has all the letters that he would need to build all his um, all these spelling words here and what I have him do is I just have him go one by one and build the words in here so he knows to lay out all his letters here and then he builds his words and instead of writing them in here um, that's what this little notebook is for so they know to write their words in here um, as they're building their spelling words. And then Adrian does the same thing with him. His um, curriculum, the teacher guide, actually tells me what letters to give him. And for instance, for week nine, or for lesson number nine, it tells me to give him a certain amount on day one, and then I have to give him more on day three. So all the extra ones are in here. Um, and with him, uh, he enjoys it quite a bit. He's really getting the gist of... Um, sounding out and blending and this is really helping them the other thing that we're doing is we're doing our copy work now as far as copy work goes it's basically just this is on thursdays that they do this and they do it while one uh boy is doing their spelling test the other one can work on their copy work and then once he does his spelling test then he can work on his copy work so it's just to kind of keep them busy so all it really is is from the reader that they read in their textbook they also have another reader that they can choose from. The Hogwarts Trophies curriculum also comes with these little readers that you can purchase separately. Um, so what I let them do on Thursday, because on Thursday they have to read the little reader as well. Um, they can decide which one they like better, if they like the, the story from the textbook or if they like this little reader better. And all they really do is they pick their favorite part of the story and they draw the picture and then they write whatever's on that page. So this would be for, um, for Adrian. Um, but that's basically it. So they draw the picture and then they write down what the page said. Um, so that's just a little thing that we started doing this year. Um, just like I said, while one is doing a spelling test, it just keeps them busy. Because um, I was getting a lot of the, I don't know what to do. Or can I go downstairs? So I figured this kind of keeps them busy. And, you know, they get to do a little bit of art and then write down their little sentence. Um, so they're enjoying doing that. So that is um, how we're handling this. The other thing as far as Adrian goes is um, his sight words. So the way that I do it is they have, um, I created these little booklets for him. And um, these are the pre-primer sight words. So he just kind of goes list by list and he just uh, learns how to read them. So right now he's on list six. Um, actually, he's almost done with list six. And then we're using the Muffet Girls, the Fluency Sight Word Pyramids. I don't know if some of you guys have seen those. I didn't print them out. We're just using the computer. And I will try to see if I can um, add um, a little video of it and how we use that um, right now. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's the um, Sight Word Fluency Sentences from the Muffet Girls. So, like I said, all he really does is he goes through his list and he knows how to use this. He has his own little computer. And he just goes to the list of words and he just goes one by one. So for instance, he'll find the word blue and uh, he will find it on his little list here, click on it, and then he'll read his little uh, sight word fluency pyramid. And then um, once he does that little sight word, then he goes back and then he finds the next one, which is red. He'll click on red and then he'll do that. And he'll just kind of go down the list 
he still has trouble with um what well, i think it's a way he still has trouble with the way, so that's why we haven't moved on to list number seven. But this is how we're doing his sight words, and he's doing great. He's loving this uh, Muffet Girls program. And I love the fact that I didn't have to print it out because it was going to be a lot of printing out. Um, and we're actually enjoying it just using it on the computer like this. Both boys went back to the Muffet Girls language arts and grammar. Um, we're doing these little packets because... In all honesty, the boys just like them better. Um, they like them better. They're funner to do. And the grammar that they were doing with the hardcore trophies that comes with that curriculum, they just weren't liking it. They, um, you know, they weren't enjoying it. So it was a struggle every morning to get them to do their grammar. And it was just becoming a headache. So um, I went ahead and started printing these out again. And we started doing them again. And they're loving them and they have fun with it. And this is something because everything is pretty teacher intensive. This is something that my nine-year-old helps my first grade, my uh, six-year-old with. And they do it together. And it gives me a little bit of free time to just kind of work with Evelyn um, while they're doing their grammar. So it kind of works out for all of us. So this is what we're doing now. I'm going to go ahead and link this in the description box if you guys haven't seen it. It's awesome. It's just different packets that just handle different grammar topics. And it just focuses on that for the month. And we love it. And it's worked out perfectly. Um, so now let me go ahead and start showing you guys the rest of our work. Okay, so one of the big questions I get asked a lot is if we're still using All About Reading. And yes, we are. We just always take breaks from Even it. Even though my son is still on level two and he's in third grade, we're fine with that. He loves the activities. He loves the readers. So we might actually start it sometime in the beginning of November. Um, so yeah, they're still doing it right now. As far as, let me show you guys real quick. With my first grader, he is on lesson 28. So that's where he's, he's going to be taking off of, I think, lesson 25 though. I think that's what I had in here. Yeah, lesson 25. So that's where he's going to start off at um, when we started back up, hopefully in November. Um, and the way that I'm going to be doing it is we're not going to be doing the word building with the magnetic letters because we already do that with their hard court. All I'm really going to focus on them doing is their worksheets and reading out of their readers. So I'm not going to be um, super anal about them, you know, using the magnetic charts or um, any of that kind of stuff. It's just going to be having them do the worksheets. They love doing the worksheets. They love the little activities that this curriculum comes with. So we're going to just continue to do it that way. Um, so yeah, so we are still doing it. Now, Vincent, um, I think he's going to, what is it, 18? Yeah, so he's going to take off from lesson 18. But also, this isn't a very long curriculum, so we should be able to finish it by the end of the school year. Um, so yeah, so like I said, this is going to be something that we start back up, hopefully, like I said, in November. Okay, so now as far as math goes, um, as far as math goes, I ended up switching over from Singapore math to teaching textbooks. So that made me change everything that we were doing um, because I am going to have my first grader start teaching textbooks once he gets into third grade. So um, what we're doing now is I have my third grader working out of teaching textbooks three. He is right now currently on lesson, I think he's on 32. I think he's starting lesson 33. I have to double check, but I think he's on lesson 33 on teaching textbooks. This is great. We love it. We are really enjoying this curriculum. Um, but um, he, doesn't, he does the lessons really quickly and he's not getting a lot of handwriting number practice so we started doing his themeville math again and this is themeville math three and we st uh right now we're currently on lesson uh pre-lesson number three so this is what we're going to be starting on monday and it took me a little bit to start him back up on this because they were kind of reluctant on starting this up again but vincent is the one that actually told me that he feels like he hasn't been writing enough when it comes to math and numbers so um I pulled this out and he's actually been enjoying it. Now, some of it is pretty repetitive. So I just kind of cross it off and he knows he can skip that and just kind of move on. Um, but he's enjoying it and um, we're going to continue to use this. So this is what we're doing as far as math with my third grader. Let me show you my first grader. I stopped doing Singapore math. What I was noticing with him especially, he was very bored of Singapore math. Like he was just bored. Um, and I had found the Abeka Arithmetic 1 and 2 at the goodwill for like two dollars each so i went ahead and bought them and um this is what i decided to start using with him and he's loving it so um the way that i'm doing it is 
I'm just kind of ripping out the pages. Sorry, this is just supplementary work. Um, I rip out the pages for the week and I stick them in here. So these are the, uh, so this would be the work for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, because we only do uh, math Monday through Thursday. And then we work from our Themeville math also. Now, as far as Themeville math goes, um, he's on lesson 10 right now. So he's on lesson 10 when it comes to this. Um, he's loving it. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with that as well. So usually what I have him do is I have him do his one page of the Abeka and then he'll do one to two pages of the Themeville math. The other thing that I have for him, and this is just supplementary work, this is just because he started doing addition and subtraction. And this is just so he can get a little bit more practice with the addition and subtraction and it's fun for him. It's a do adult uh, from Lakeshore Learning. So he also gets to use a dauber with it. The other thing that he's been doing is the addition book from, uh, this is from the Dollar Tree. And same thing, he just, he sometimes he decides he just wants to do a page from here and he does it and um, that's it. And he actually loves doing addition and subtraction. So I'm not gonna fight him on that. If he chooses to do something from there, I let him. So that is what we're doing right now as far as math for the boys. Okay, so as far as geography, both boys, we're still working on this. We haven't had a chance to start these yet um, because we're still finishing this up from last year. We're um, almost done. I mean, we're pretty, we're pretty far into it, but because we only do one page every Friday, it is taking us a little bit longer. But um, either way, they enjoy it. It's pretty simple. Um, I, don't, I don't usually have them do more than one page a day. So for Friday, we'll just do this, next Friday that, and so forth. Um, so yeah, so as far as geography, both boys are still doing um, this geography here. So now as far as our 50 nifty notebook, this is um, the United States geography book. We're um, trying to figure out our schedule right now because we just usually don't have time. Once we get to this, we just don't have time for it. Um, and it's kind of sad. I'm kind of sad because the boys love it, but it's something that I just need to figure out my scheduling and figure out if we can do it after lunch. Thing is after lunch, the boys are already kind of done with it and tired and they don't want to come back up. So I don't force them to, but I think in the near future, we are going to have to just start coming back up after lunch and just kind of doing our little, uh, state by state geography where I believe in, I think we're in Minnesota now. Or Michigan, sorry. So we left off on Michigan. So um, if we start back up, we're gonna start back up on Michigan and then just kind of continue on from there. Um, so like, again, this is something we love doing. We just, schedule wise, I just haven't been able to figure out when to incorporate it into our day. Um, so we'll see with that. I'm, I'm still trying to figure all that out. Okay, so now as far as history, as far as history, the boys are loving the story of the world. Um, and so far we've been okay with the little religious aspect of it. It's, it hasn't been anything too crazy or extreme. Um, we are currently on chapter seven. That's where we're starting off at. And again, this is something that we do every Friday. Um, and we're doing the audio and, uh, surprisingly the boys are really enjoying the audio. Um, it's kind of like my time to really just work with Evelyn and the boys just sit and listen to the story and do their coloring page and whatever activity we can set up. And they're really enjoying it. So, so far, so good with Story of the World. Okay, now for social studies. Now for social studies, we are currently on, I wanna say lesson number three. This again, we do every Friday. It's something that we do together. And I was lucky enough to last time I went to Goodwill, I found a second book. Um, I found this one, which is the same thing. The cover is slightly different. Um, this is a Texas edition one. Um, and I was pretty excited to find it and it was pretty inexpensive and now each boy has their own textbook which is so much easier because they were sharing one and that was just getting crazy. Um, so we're on lesson number three and this is um, all about apples and I love it because it falls right onto the beginning of fall and um, then we get to talk about Cesar Chavez a little bit which I'm kind of excited about. Um, so this is how we're doing social studies and um, we're using the Scott Forsman. This is second grade, I think, level. Yeah, second grade level social studies. Um, as far as their workbooks, they're doing good. Um, even though second grade level, I feel like my the, the worksheets themselves are simple enough where my first grader is not having too much of a hard time uh, filling out the worksheets and um, doing the little activities that come with it. 
Um, so yeah, so it's working out perfect. Um, they also have their social studies work, um, interactive notebook. This is just where we add coloring pages. So if we're learning about, um, if the social studies book talks about anybody, I try to print out a book, for, a page for them to color and glue inside of their uh, notebook. So far so good, they're enjoying the um, social studies. They actually enjoy social studies quite a bit. So um, that is what we're doing as far as social studies. And then we have our science. Um, for science, we do science fusion. We are currently on unit number three. We're gonna be starting this on this Friday, and it's gonna be, or next Friday, sorry. And it's all on matter. Um, now, this science fusion is pretty basic. Um, it's not anything spectacular. It's pretty straight to the point, pretty straightforward. Um, you have your lesson you have a few little activities that you get to do um when it comes to the actual uh flip chart which is this big guy here this is where you do some of the uh more hands-on activities for each lesson it'll tell you what to do i don't have the teacher guide for this so sometimes the sometimes the lesson tells me if i need if i'm gonna need the flip chart or not sometimes it doesn't so sometimes I'm just trying to figure that out. But see, like here it says inquiry flip chart. That would be this. Um, and it'll tell you like page 15, which I've noticed that the pages are a little bit different. So even though it says page 15, it might not be that. Uh, what's the weight? Yeah, see, it's not the same. So I noticed that mine, it's, a, it's off by a few pages. And I think it's because the this Science Fusion is a Texas edition where my flip chart isn't. Um, so usually I, it's kind of tedious because I have to try to figure out where or what page we're supposed to be on when it comes to the flip chart. So that is how we do our science so far. It's going good. Like I said, this science is pretty basic. This is a work text. So this is all you really need. It has the workbook and the textbook together. Um, so far the boys are enjoying it. We're having fun with it. So we're going to stick with this, um, throughout this year. I am looking for a different science for maybe next year, but for now this is working out fine. Okay, and lastly, our art. Um, we're doing art with Trista. As far as this goes, it's going amazing. The boys are absolutely loving our art lessons. Um, if you guys haven't seen my video, I'm gonna try to link it in the description box. I do a whole video on what we're doing for art, and I also created a playlist with all the different videos from Trista's channel. And I also created a free printable, which is this here, with all the lessons, I also created a little bit of a supply list for each lesson. And um, if it's something you're doing with us, if, you're, if, it, if, you, if it's something that you printed out and you're doing art with Trista, let me know in the comment box. I, want, I would love to know if you're doing this art. I'm going to show you guys a few of the ones that we've done already. So for instance, art lesson number one, which is Lionscape. This is the boys. Number two was our Blue Ridge Parkway value painting. Um, these are the boys. Um, so I think they did a great job. Um, again, this one Evelyn did as well. I don't know where hers is. She always misplaces her art. Um, then for our lesson number three, we did um, the, uh, what is it? The color wheel inspired mouse paint. So this is the kids little um, art project that they did for that. And then I'll have to take you off the tripod so I can show you the rest the of them. Apple Still Life. This one here is Evelyn's and I have them up on my board. Um, this one here is Vincent's and then this one here is Adrian's and then for art class number five We did the texture pumpkin. So this one here is Evelyn's. This is Adrian's and then this one over here is Vincent's right there and then where's our other the brittle inspired leaf that one I actually have um, up there and from here honestly, I cannot tell whose is whose because they all three did such a great job. Um, I am going to guess, I think Evelyn was my rebel. So I'm going to say that one's Evelyn's right there because I remember she did pink for the outside. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say that's Evelyn's. This one here, let's see if i looking at it, I can tell. I believe this was Adrian's. Yeah, I believe that one was Adrian's and then I believe this is Vincent's here. And they did an amazing job with that art project. So as you guys can see, they're doing amazing with these little art projects and following the Art with Trista class. Um, we also did these monsters here, but I have those on the stairs. Let me go ahead and show you guys those. Kind of dark, but this is uh, my stairway. And I do um, extend some of our art out here. So the bottom one down here is Evelyn's. 
the middle one here is Vincent's and the top one here is Adrian's. Um, and I think they came out so cute. And um, I went ahead and put him here on the stairwell. Hey guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little look into what the boys are working on. If you guys have questions on anything, um, please feel free and let me know. Um, again, be on the lookout because I am going to be doing a complete review on the second grade level hardcore trophy soon. Um, but like I said, if you guys have questions on anything, let me know and I will talk to you next time.